All right, guys. So we're doing something a little different this time. We're used to seeing all these planes. We got us some new RC cars. What are these things, Matt? E-Revo 2.0 and 4x4 VXO uh, TSM Rustler. Super excited. What else do we got today? Got a whole bunch of new parts for him. Haven't even driven that one. Already gonna do some changes. He's got a whole bag of ideas for these things. Buddy Travis is here today, helping us out, hanging out. What's going on, guys? Got the dogs here today, like <laughs> usual, always barking. But uh, yeah, we've always, we're, I've been into planes for years and been into cars, I actually started out with cars racing tent scale and that's kind of where my roots are honestly is 10 scale clay and uh 10 scale carpet astro and that's that's where i've always we've, we've always done something like that me and my dad we, we raised 10 scale for a long time buggy stadium truck and then a uh, local shop kind of got out of it so we kind of got out of it and then i kind of got into planes a few years ago and in the winter it's just kind of a little bit more of a project going flying a little bit more of a a little bit more of a hassle it seems like getting the planes all loaded up and going out and setting things up when it's freezing cold out but it's still fun to go out and play with the trucks i think and bash in the snow and wet wet conditions and stuff and these things are fun all the time we go to silver lake quite a bit so these will be a lot of fun at silver lake the paddle tires on them and stuff and uh Got a little bit of cabin fever, so here, yeah, yeah, it's gonna get be, out and do something new. It's going to be exciting to get out and throw these things in the mud and tear them up, see what we can bash up on them. Really, we got these things to uh, to just have fun and see how durable they are nowadays. Because, I mean, I remember when I had a rustler when I was younger, and it was pretty durable. But when I got into the tent skill stuff, all the carbon fiber, or the, the real racing side of things, everything was carbon fiber. And uh, it was very... We were very thorough and it was right up to the specs and everything. And these cars are a little bit more just built to be very tough and bashable. And that's what I like about them. I'm excited about that. You said they don't make very many gas powered cars in nature. They, they still they do, do, but there's just not a big market for it because electric is easier, it's faster, it's cleaner, it's more accepted more places. That one's brushless, right? Yeah, all of, both of them are brushless. Really? Yep. Um, they, the brushless has become a big thing in the last few years and they're still only, they still only, they still use the term brushless just because it's kind of a new thing in the last 10, 15 years with the RC brushless. But when I was a kid, I mean, I'm 27 years old and when I was 10 years old, if you had, if you were racing in the, in the brushless class, you had a, some serious money into your car, you had a serious setup. And uh, I remember when I got old enough and I could afford a brushless setup, I built, I built a Team Associated B2, the B2 buggy, I think it was, and it had a, a Novak, a Novak 3.3 and a half turn brushless system in it. And I remember racing it and it was, it was a completely different world of racing and speed and handling. And, uh, but this is, th these trucks, they handle great. You can beat the crap out of them. They're, I think they're amazing. So we're gonna have some fun with them. We're gonna so we're gonna tear we right into them. We're gonna yeah. This is the E Revo 2.0. I like the clipless body. It's kind of a hassle to get used to. I feel like, but I think once we're used to it, we'll be a lot happier. This truck is sweet though, guys. Onboard, inboard suspension. Uh, I think it says this one had a top speed of 70 miles an hour, and I can't remember what they say it weighed. Um, it's heavy. It's quite heavy, though. I don't want to sound wrong, so I, I'm not going to say what, I, I think it was, it could have been either 13 pounds or somewhere around 13 or 15 pounds, I feel like it weighed. Maybe more, maybe less. Craziest suspension setup ever. What do they call that? Oh, uh, they just call it onboard suspension, as far as I can tell. On inboard suspension, so that the shocks aren't so exposed in the arms. 
And then the uh, the VXL 4x4 Rustler. This thing, see, I I grew up racing Rustlers. And they were always two-wheel drive. They never made a four-wheel drive Rustler. So to That's me, awesome. a four-wheel drive Rustler is like king of the hill. Because this thing was, this was the best of the best when I was growing up. This was, if you had a sweet Rustler set up or a sweet Bandit, I mean, I, I had a Bandit too. They were basically the same thing, just short, shorter AR and shorter wheelbase. Um... This truck is really cool. I mean, did you put that wheelie bar in, or did it come with? Came with it. it. This is stock factory out of the box, just like it is. All I did was set the battery in the battery tray. So you got some plans for the wiring and the drive shafts and all. All that I need stuff. to do with this, the only thing is, the batteries that I bought, they're the Electron Pro, uh, fifty-two hundred milliamp, fifty Cs, and. Uh, these are great batteries. I've never, I, I, I've, they're a little expensive, but I've never had problems with Electron, and they're 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 great discharge and they have a long run time. But the only problem is these batteries come with an XT60 connector, and we need to change it to the XT90 because uh, with the amount of current both these cars pull, you want the most amount, the best connection you can have. And the XT60 is a little bit small, and with the amount of like I said, the amount of current both these receivers are going to require, we want to switch to the XT90 for best performance. Cool. So that thing has two batteries, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. The the Revo 2.0 runs on uh, two 3S batteries. The Rustler one, runs on one 3S battery or two cell. You can run it on a two cell or a three cell. We're going to put it on a three cell though, of course. Um, I ordered pet, our local shop didn't have the paddles they had the paddles for the Revo 2.0 but they, they were on the chrome wheels and I didn't really like the chrome wheels so I ordered the the Proline paddles on the I can't remember what wheels they're on but the wheels that I ordered have removable hubs in the center so you can change the offset of the wheels without changing the whole wheel that's oh, wow. crazy and uh the the wheels I got for the Rustler are the same way. The Those hub sweet. See, because the hub the the wheels on the Rustler are the same front and back, other than the offset. The offset in the front is a lot less because it has to clear all the suspension. The offset in the rear is more so it can be in farther. Um therefore you can order the same wheels from Proline for the Rustler as long as you have the hubless centers. Because you can change the offset once you get the wheels to require what you want for the Rustler, the Stampede, and one or two other trucks, I believe, with the 2.2 10 scale tires. But uh, I ordered the 2.2 uh, paddle tires. I can't remember what they're called, but I ordered the front and rear for this, and they're sweet. The paddle tires look sweet for this. What's the benefit of being able to change the hub size? Is it for different tires, or? Ma mainly so that you can mount it to a different, if you wanted to mount it to a different truck, flexibility. So like, say that, yeah, like this truck, the the wheels are the same. They're both, I think, uh, a 13 or 14 millimeter hex hub. And then you can just change the hub, the size, the, the offset of the wheel. To adapt to different trucks so oh, you can okay. you can use the same wheel and tire on different trucks and have the same performance oh uh, then you don't have to worry about the clearance of the front steering correct because like when we were when i raced so i guess let's see here see a good example say yeah when we raced some of the 10 scale trucks uh mike when we raced carpet we would put different shock towers on wider A-arms, and we would lower the truck completely because we were just racing flat track carpet and or Astro. And we would lower the truck to where the drive line was completely level. And then we would have smaller wheels on it and the offset would be further in so that the whole, the axle width would be wider so that the car would be more planted. I was noticing that the tires in the rear are towed in a little bit, and he was explaining why. Yeah, I think they, they, they mainly do that just to keep the car in a straight line, when it's, especially when it's on two wheels. 
I mean, these cars spend a lot, with the power systems they put in these cars nowadays, they spend a lot of time on their back tires. That's why they put wheelie bars on from the factory. They spend a lot of time on the back tires. And a little bit of toe-in on the back axle helps the car to stay in a straight line, I think, when it's on its back tires. That's very cool. So, this thing has uh, the stock plastic drive shafts in it, of course, and they're quite heavy duty. I, I mean, they're quite heavy duty. But Traxxas has had this drive shaft design for a long time and never really changed it. So, we bought the uh, MIP upgrades. It's the, it's the same axles that have been in the Stampede, Stampede, the Rustler, Rally four wheel drive, the Electric Nitro. I mean, Electric and Nitro of all those. And the Slash, so. Once yeah, again, a little bit long. pricey on the pricey side, but a huge, huge benefit to have in your Rustler if you really just want to bash it and not worry about <coughs> breaking things. Um, my buddy Steven Wilkowski, he works at the local hobby shop, and he's, he's become a good friend over the years. He's, he helps me out a lot, and he recommended, the only thing that he recommended was to do these drive shafts on the Ruster 4x4 XL VXL. He said that should be the only thing we're going to have problems with, and uh, Steven knows me pretty well, and he knows that we're pretty hard on our equipment. So, if he's right, we should have some fun today. We're going to try and get these swapped out. I think we might go to the... Uh, there's a skate park in downtown Kalamazoo. We might go try and tear that up as long as there's not too many little gremlins playing. We're gonna go, <laughs> we're gonna go tear it up. That's awesome. We might even get the Latrax Teton going for something for Travis to play with. That would be a good idea, Hank. Get the little one going. Yeah. Got the parts for that, kind of. Yep, got the speed control. Yeah, this thing's gonna spend a lot of time on its back tires, I think. So, might as well do this one first. Does that have a drive shaft run up here like this does? Or to the center? Yeah. Yeah. The same thing? Yep. This one doesn't have a center dip. Okay? okay. This one only has a differential in the rear, and then it goes straight to the differential in the front. So it's a straight drive shaft straight through the car, locking both drive both differentials together. It's either yes or no. This truck has a transmission in the center. See this truck has a center a center. Uh, okay. It's a center differential. This takes the power from the motor and differentiates it to the front and rear because you can, so, so that when you're wheeling, the front tires will get more power, or when you're pulling hard uphill, the front tires will get a little bit more bite. Okay. So now, in the long run, and you can the, lock the drive, would the solid setup like that be more reliable than the transmission type? Um, I don't. I think it's about reliability. I don't think, I think it's about taking the power from the motor and toning it down because this 6S motor makes so much t torque. It needs to go through something that's gonna slip before it breaks the shaft. Gotcha. That motor does not, it, even though it makes ridiculous power, it's not a heavy enough chassis to make it twist anything in there. Gotcha. So you got all the wires and all the connectors and whatnot. New drive shaft. I peeked online. This Revo is 11.2 pounds. Is it okay? 11.2. So then this is probably right around seven or eight. I'm guessing. Yeah. Where do you clip? What's up, Sky? <laughs> You're not gonna save those connectors for anything? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> So, is there different battery options? I know you said something about the 3 cell or 3S. What's that? What's that, buddy? Different battery options for these? Um, yeah, you can get different battery setups. I mean, uh, the best thing to do, I think they, I think they call for 5,000 milliamp batteries. I think each one calls for 5,000 milliamp battery. 3S, and then the wrestler called, you, you can use a 2S or a 3 cell on that. You can grab it and just show them over here. Chris? I think 
parts that tracks this sends with just a couple extra a couple spare tools and things kind of cool so are we pulling this stuff off the uh the tracks or we're we just gonna leave all that foam on there yeah you can pull all that stuff off there <laughs> it all comes out yeah. real easily super easy oh it's got a little pin yeah oh gosh <laughs> Oh, Is yeah. that a tongue depressor? <laughs> <laughs> it's made to come out of that pretty easily, bud. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> hey, I wonder how she run with the foam on the tires. I don't know. All experimental. I bet on the hardwood floors this is going to be a blast. I'm guessing probably not. No? <laughs> you don't think it's going to go anywhere? I don't know. So it spins and takes. I, I think with it being all-wheel drive, it'd probably be pretty fun. We really stiffen the suspension on that because we plan on putting oh, that chopped up uh, plane on top of it, making it fly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we probably back that off a little bit, eh? <laughs> yeah, you can probably take a little torque out of the old shacks on that girl. <laughs> yeah, they're like maxed. <laughs> You have to do that to both of them, Matt? Yep. And both of, and all three of the batteries. It's the best thing for it. Seems pretty impressive. The Revo? Mm hmm. Yeah, that thing looks nuts, man. I can't believe how heavy it is. Nuts. It is pretty, pretty heavy. These just, yeah, these can just slide right off of here. Hopefully, they're pretty durable. We're going to find out today. Gotta stay tuned. Seems like a full hook. <laughs> oh, yeah. That thing got good shocks on it. It's got the premium GTR shocks on it. We need to get the premium threaded. Uh, that's the that's the next thing we need to get for this. Is the fully threaded anodized shocks. So we don't have any shock issues with this thing. Look at this hit something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A little tweak. Soldering or what? Oh, we solder everything here, Chris. Good. Um, yeah, we don't we don't plan on anything besides solder holding. You know, don't don't have faith in anything else, buddy. That's pretty cool that clipping for yeah, the lid that's to really the top. Nice. I can't tell you how many times I've lost the little clips that hold the top on. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these it's kind of crazy. They have like built-in gauges in these little bodies. Sweet. You need to do something like that for a crawler because I know the crawler that I have, I'm always knocking the body clips out. I even have these little um, rubber things that you put the clips into. And... Uh, still just rip some you know you're dragging the body over rocks and stuff so it's pretty fun <clears throat> so matt you got uh what'd you say a single servo steering setup for this yeah yeah i think that's gonna be pretty cool um it's a savic server here actually can't remember what the specs were on it 
Um, let's see here. Look up uh, what you have on the internet real quick. And you're going to be fun, right? And look up uh, Savix SW1210G. SW1210FG. So why did Steven recommend that? Um, Savix SW1210SG. Uh, what's the what type of torque does it have and the speed? What's its purpose? Why would you switch from a double to a single? I'm gonna show you right now. Torque 42 millimeter tall servo, 277 ounces of speed of point ounces of torque, 0. 0.15. And 200, 277 inch ounces of torque. Okay, so now look right up. Right now it has two. Look up the Erie. He's one. switching to more. Axis. You said it deletes something too. The, the yeah, you can't use the Traxxas GPS or whatever. See, this. So then, yep, click on <laughs> that's the So point. now the tires won't be oriented. Mm -hmm. According to the body, right? So we look up specs. Keep going down. All the way to the bottom. So we make this is something in there. Is it detail? So it's going to be more difficult to drive now, you think? Specs. ESC specs? Truck specs, maybe. So, right now, the servo it has dual 2075 servos. Um, okay, so the stock servo has 250 ounces of torque. The stock servo, they're 250 ounces of torque. This has 277. So, clearly you're not going to have as much torque for the steering. But it's going to steer better because the stock Traxxas servos aren't going to be fighting against each other. The stock servos, no matter what, you, if you adjust them properly, you can get them close to not meshing. But they're always going to one's going to travel more one way than the other because they're never they're not synced perfectly. They're just Traxxas servos are good servos, but they're not they're not a one hundred and twenty five dollar servo. And one of these is going to make that truck steer better than the two servos that's in it right now. Is there like a hardware that links them together or something? Or just nope. The something? hardware that links the two servos together underneath is what makes it rough right here. This is what the issue is. Is these, you can adjust these right here so that the servos are not chattering. But so if you'd have to undo one of these and it would go further or than the other. See, so then you know that it's not working together all the time. One's constantly fighting the other. So you're going to go ahead and replace that before we even go? I think I'm going to run that for a while. I think I'm going to run the stock steering servos and see how long it lasts. Just because that's not as much of a problem as, uh, I mean, if that truck, if one of the servos goes out on that thing, you unhook the bell crank and the thing will still steer. That's the cool thing about it. If you blow one of those servos out, hopefully the other one doesn't strip itself out as well. So you can unhook the one and it'll still steer. That's crazy. But those Savic servos are bulletproof. I mean, they're bulletproof. They said they're almost waterproof, right? The, the Savic servos are 100% waterproof. The truck is pretty watertight. I mean, it's pretty much, they say it's waterproof. But they say not to treat it as it's 100% water proof, you know. They don't want you submerging it. Sure, yeah. I mean, they don't, you know, it could be, gets a little goofy if you're trying to drive it in a pond and, you know, I mean. Talk but like, my timber, the big plane, the Timber 110, that has a thousand dollars worth of Savic servos in it. And I bought all expensive Savic servos because I don't want to put that plane in the ground. And I trust them. I know they're not going to go bad. So. 
So what happened to that jet? Are you going to get that from Christian? I don't know. He fixed it, apparently. Didn't he say he had uh, a new he, jet in the works already? He just bought the SU-30, the Sequoia. What is that? It's giant. The is big, the big yeah, twin, huge. the twin seventy millimeter EDF from E Flight. That's a big plane. Just came out. Yeah, yeah, it just came out not too long ago. What are you dipping that in? Uh, flux. Soldered flux. This should be a good day. I'd say. I have no skill whatsoever driving these things, so it should be interesting. I'm just in the slow ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a 60 mile an hour machine too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Should be interesting. Skate park's not that big. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see one of these get launched off a quarter rail or half pipe. You're telling me. <laughs> I've never even seen the skate park downtown. Have you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never even been there. Should be cool. It's, uh, it attracts some interesting people. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we're going to keep working, and we'll let you know how it goes. Until next time.